who likes the processor? <laughs> half, half of people like the processor. That's kind of good. Uh, and yeah. Anyway, I'm not gonna tell you. <laughs> uh, this is my agenda. So today we are gonna talk about basics, about um, basics uh, operator like sharp and sharp sharp. Uh, replacement and response, how they happen in and why we can treat some desired results and how we can um, um, how we can trick the processor and do what we want. Also I will show you how we can implement arithmetics. Surprisingly we can some numbers in um, a processor which is kind of strange but also exciting. It's cool. <laughs> also, we can write control statements like uh, if. And I believe uh, we will develop enough uh, knowledge to write R for each macro, which takes another macro and evaluate it for uh, at least arguments that you pass. And also, I will tell you how it can be useful sometimes. Um, so this talk uh, is not about the processor is either good or bad. Let's talk about afterwards. Or, I don't know. Somewhere in private. Uh, I don't want to tell you what to do or not to do. And this is not a story of uh, disappointment. But this talk, um, the aim of this talk is to show what can be done with the, the processor. So um, I like to give intuition in my talks. Oops. Yeah. So here you see the video of the skateboarding, and the intuition is we are gonna do many tricks, and one of the trick is kickflip. It's uh, you just pop the uh, part, then you. Flip, you flip it, then you land it. This is a very easy trick. But also, you can do underflip. This is while you're falling with the board, you kind of scoop the board. If you see here, this leg. And this is what we are going to do with the preprocessor. This is <laughs> the intuition. Um, this is some academic stuff. Uh, there are two evaluation orders, one of them applicative, the second is normal order. And we are used to work with applicative order. It's basically where uh, arguments, they are calculated before the function is called. So here uh, we have a square function, typical square function. It takes 1 plus 2, 1 plus 2 reduced into 3, then the function is expanded, 3 multiplied by 3, we get 9. In normal order, it's kind of differently. <coughs> we have to substitute this 1 plus 2 twice, then calculate it, and then multiply 3 by 3, <coughs> then we get 9. And the preprocessor uses a somewhat normal order. Uh, yeah. The basics. Uh, this blue <coughs> thing in square brackets, it's uh, links to the standard and when you get uh, access to the slides you can click and read in non-human way. Uh, but here, basically all matrices, um, they are divided in two types. Uh, one of them is object-like macro, and the second is function-like macro. The first one is basically a substitution, so we can define one. One is an identifier, and the digital, the digit one is uh, the replacement list. Um, 
and basically if you write in a file one, it will get expanded to one of like those. Uh, similarly, with function like macro, uh, you will have parameters, um, identifier list, and um, this x, y, they will get replaced, and if you pass this argument, it will be 4 plus 2, obvious. Um, so let's talk about uh, the um, basic opera uh, operators, sharp and sharp sharp. Sharp operator replaces a token with a string literal. So let's look at um, let me call the pointer. So if we look at this example <coughs> below sharp forty two, it will expand into a string literal forty two. And similarly sharp sharp pal and l it will concatenate into identifier file. Um, if you're familiar with C functions, it's a um, function which takes a uh, long and will calculate the power of something. Yeah. Let's go further. So, here is a tricky question. Uh, here we define a um, function like macro, concat, which takes two arguments, two parameters, and concatenates them. And also we define macro for object like macro. And my question to the audience, what, what is that gonna expand to? <coughs> I was going to say 42, but... It's 4, too. <laughs> it's not 42. That's a good idea. <laughs> Here, where underflips comes into the game. Here, we need to provoke the preprocessor to do rescan. So, I think you already know the answer here. What's going to be? 42. Excellent. But why? You will see. And will it work if the concat and concat type are declared in the opposite order? Again? If you declare the concat underscore i first, will it still work the same way? Yes, yes, yes. It doesn't depend on the other. And this is how we land into the desired code. This is a um, non-human uh, standard description of the preprocessor, and I emphasized more or less human uh, words. So for each parameter uh, in the macro, the parameters are replaced after all macros expanded. But in red, you see neither preceded by a sharp or sharp sharp nor followed by a sharp sharp so this means <coughs> the tokens in sharp and sharp sharp arguments are not the subject of further expanding so if we take a look again here <coughs> here we immediately replace x with 4 and y with two, and since four is not the subject for further expanding, it immediately concatenates with um, two. Mm. But here we trick the preprocessor. Here will be a four, here two, then it will rescan it, uh, it will be a four digit and two digit, and then we can continue two digits, finally. Yeah, let's go further. <coughs> uh, what is it about? Yeah, this is 
also the same words and slightly different words. So after all parameters in the replacement list have been substituted and sharp and sharp sharp processing has taken place. So after identifier became string literals or two tokens concatenated, the resulting processing token sequence is rescanned from more matrices. So here is example. Uh, yeah, so first example is easy. We already have done it. Uh, the second example shows more or less um, detailed steps how this scan is happening. And this is another question to the audience what's going to be? So silent. Silence is dangerous. So this is related to the second example, or huh? yeah, it's it follows from the second example, right? Q four the the digit four followed by F O U R. Oh, in quotes. In double double quotes. Oh yeah. Hmm. And I oh, it'll be, it'll be two strings. Wow. <laughs> So, this, so look at Q. What Q is replaced with? With Q? X. So 4 will go to the QQ. It will be QQ4. 4. 4 will be rescanned and it will be 4 digit. And it will go here. So then it will be string literal 4. Yeah. And here we took sharp 4 letters. So it's going to be. Four digit and string literal four, isn't it? <laughs> so what happens if you put a hash before the QQ on the first line? Uh, you mean here? Yeah. Um, it will be a string literal of QQ parenthesis X. Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. Is it, is it not? It is the digit four. Should that not also be in quotes? Yeah, that's true, that's true. Okay. We actually can uh, check it, uh, if we have a little time. Yeah, go for it. Um, what can I select at all? Just select the first part and run them, yeah. So, the most beautiful tool ever exists in the world for C++ developers. So you just open it, paste it, and you put student just in case. And it. This is it. Right. So you understand the topic. <laughs> Oops. Okay, let's continue. No, no, no skateboards. Anyway, let's continue. So, arithmetic. The way how arithmetic is implemented is very dumb way. It's basically how Cape and uh, the arithmetic, they just go two st four sticks and two sticks, <coughs> they sum it together, it's going to be six sticks of this. So, it means Uh, so, so for every combination of numbers, we have to define macro, <laughs> and I call it boom. Um, so for for this uh, combination, uh, we generate the result for four plus two. Um, if you open slides, you can follow this link. I hope it's not going to destroy my data. So yeah, so you see here, yeah. 
and this is all generated generated by this beautiful Haskell code. <laughs> So, and the rest part is quite trivial. You basically do concatenations. All you have to do is to form this macro name, macro identifier, which will be rescanned into the final result. So, <clears throat> we again trick the preprocessor to do rescanning. So, if you pass um, a macro, as an uh, argument, it will be scanned. So this is why I specify here some i. And so basically, um, it's concatenation of uh, some boom underscore x. Oops. And also, the second argument is concatenation underscore y. And the some i concatenate them and that's it basically. It's very simple. Um, so in this case we obviously get six because we form exactly this macro identifier. But in this case we form this identifier for which we don't have the answer. And similarly the subtraction and comparison works and also you can do division by this sinus functions, whatever you want. Kind of dumb, but it works. I don't know why would you need it. But sometimes you need to increment something. And the uh, control flow. Um, we can create such a macro which takes a condition as the first argument. And depending on this, it expands either into that true clause or false clause. So in this case, IIF means um, if and only if. It means it takes either one or zero. There is more uh, relaxed um, version of this function, which takes any number, but it calls boolean, which I think you can guess what it is. It was generated at Haskell. <clears throat> so, how it works? Works very easily. We again need to, we need to um, specify two variants, if boom zero, which means if boom uh, are condition clause evaluated into zero, then we take two clauses as uh, parameters and we expand it into a false clause and similarly for true variant when we take one and the rest is very similar as with um, some macro we concatenate our if boom underscore with condition and pass <coughs> our clauses here and the relaxed function, the relaxed uh, macro looks like this. It just passes uh, the condition through boolean. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is another trick which shows you that you not always have to be on the board or in the air, so you basically can kick uh, your board somewhere than Japanese. Just imagine the ground was the false clause and the bench is the true clause. <laughs> Intuition. <laughs> Develop your fantasy. And he ran by the uh, true clause. He's a good bit. Uh, variable arguments. For our next trick, we need to learn variable <coughs> arguments. It's uh, basically uh, just like um, variadic parameters. So first of all, of course, we have underscore, underscore, va, underscore, args, underscore, underscore. 
uh, this is uh, the link to the non-human standard. Um, it designates very big macro arguments. Basically, uh, those uh, tokens that you pass. There is also the a opt, which takes a parameter, uh, which takes um, not exactly parameter, but uh, tokens, and they may contain a comma. So it doesn't have to be exactly one parameter. And it expands into its tokens arguments if the A arrays <coughs> is not empty. So a trivial example would be um, first macro is takes everything and just um, spills out um, everything back. Just like if we uh, give it one, two, three, it will give us back one, two, three. And the second macro is slightly different if we give it, if it gives it uh, arguments, any arguments, then we will see zero comma arguments. If not, we will just see zero. Of course. So, trick for function like macro as a parameter. So, here is the, the step where we build our very interesting macro and which has some potential to be reused. Um, <coughs> so, so, basically, here we apply our uh, method methodology that we used previously. We are trying to um, to do concatenation with for each boom. If we got any arguments, if we didn't get any ad, uh, arguments, it will <coughs> expand into emptiness, and it will stop iterations. It's supposed to stop iterations, but if not, it will be for each boom uh, underscore one which will call itself again, taking the first parameter and, you know, just like a recursion functional program. But it doesn't work. No funny use, sorry. <coughs> uh, so, there is um, a few words about this. Um, if the name of the macro being replaced is found during the scan of the replacement list, it is not replaced. Furthermore, if any nested replacement encounter the name of the macro being replaced, it's not replaced. This non-replaced non macro name preprocessing tokens are not longer available for further replacement. So, it's like, we can't use for each boom one anymore at all. Mm. What is it? Yeah, this is uh, another example of uh, some sort of recursion. Basically, in this example, Q is expanded into itself, and once it got expanded, it marked as uh, unavailable for further replacement and it just died uh, and finds its end. This is basically, this is not how we want to roll our recursion. This is the fixed example. It's a bit trivial. Um, I'll try to explain it. <clears throat> so basically, we need to bypass the rule. We need to create such conditions where we don't call the macro <coughs> which we want to call recursively, uh, but we yeah, we need to create such conditions where we call it 
outside of the first scan. It takes time, even for me. Um, <clears throat> so first of all, we need a, a macro expand uh, and just to provoke a uh, rescan. Um, the second macro is empty, it just expands into emptiness. Um, by the standard, it means it creates a place marker, <coughs> which you will see how can help us. And also, we define defer. Uh, macro is to defer evaluation of a macro. Basically, this macro is supposed to is supposed to prevent the macro from further um, expanding during the current scan, and it had it, but then it will be have to be um, kicked and pushed to be expanded again, and you will see how. <coughs> so. Also, to do the trick, we need to have uh, some sort of uh, indirect uh, name for our recursive uh, macro. I call it Q basic passive, which expands in Q i. Uh, this is our main macro. Q takes x and basically Q i takes all. <coughs> and here, the magic is happening. Um, so first of all, we want to do something that just for uh, illustration, we take the argument and uh, and give back um, a string literal. But then we want to make Q uh, to be uh, expanded recursively again and again. We want to be able, basically, to call it again without having it marked as um, as non-available for re-examination. Just a sec. So. Okay. Um, so empty basically, even though there's nothing there, it kind of stops the expansion being recognized as something we've seen before, that, that the preprocessor has seen before, is that it? Yeah, uh, so basically the purpose of it is to break the sequence uh, macro identifier and identifiers lists, so function like macro is not function like marker. It's just a, a set of few tokens. And in between of this, a uh, place marker, which designates uh, nothingness. So this property gives us that the processor doesn't expand it further. You see? <laughs> it's very hard to explain, especially on examples um, but let's see um, I, will, I will continue and probably you will understand <coughs> so uh, this defer Q passive for it expands into basically it goes by the by the bulk of um, a defer macro it takes Q passive uh, replace M with the Q passive. Uh, here we have pointer. <coughs> here we have nothingness. Mm -hmm. So this macro won't be called. And here we have um, just a four in um, R parentheses. And here it's in action. So you call Q. Deposit for. Here we 
give back uh, a string literal part, and then the sequence of uh, request uh, of recursion continues. So this thing, if there was no empty here, it would be executed. So Q passive would expand into QI, and since that we called already QI, it would stop, and QI wouldn't be uh, um, available for further expansions. But uh, the Q passive, the definition of Q passive, there's a parenthesis there. Uh, no, no, no. So I think it's that, that should be there because. Put a space after the name of the macro, so it doesn't get extended. So I, I think that might just be a defined buffer. This is the trick. Q passive and parentheses, they don't lead the preprocessor to call this macro. Yeah. Because. Q passive without parentheses is not defined. Q passive with parentheses is defined. So no, it's the definition not. Has it's uh, it's not called it's not because there is a space here. It's not called because there is a place marker which we created with empty. <coughs> See? See but in your defer, you have a space between the M and the empty, and the empty and the the the. Uh, the last set of parentheses. Uh, you they, need those. You need those. Or you, you certainly need them between M and empty. Whether you need them for the, the last two sets, of, I don't know. But yeah, what I think is to get passive replaced with QI, you can have parentheses in the definition. But I might be wrong. Um. Actually, I can show you an um, interactive version of it. First, I have. I didn't have. Uh, I think I can copy this one. And it's supposed to be. Yeah, so. You see, this Q passive hasn't been expanded because of um, there is a place marker here. But if you put <coughs> empty, it will be QI. <laughs> and since QI is marked as being previously used, it's not longer gets expanded. Got it? Anyway. <laughs> it takes time, but this is the trick. Um, and here's the thing: we um, to continue expanding um, to uh, to continue to do uh, expanding. <coughs> we have to. Push it manually and call expand basically. And how many you call expand? Uh, this is the number iteration iteration would be. <clears throat> so let's go for a more practical example. Um, so you saw many expands, but in practice we use evil. Which is not evil, but it's evil. <laughs> uh, it's basically tons of uh, iterations. It doesn't matter how many you do them. And since the preprocessor is very fast, it doesn't matter how many of them. So. Oops. Um, so, yeah. Here we have uh, for each we are trying to write our for each uh, macro, and all we do is we again uh, make something that we put for us a place marker. 
which would break uh, which would break function like macro. In our case, it's um, for each passive. And uh, the for, which would do the trick for us. And here we have for each um, boom underscore, which is on the previous slide, it expands into nothingness. But uh, underscore one, if we have at least one argument, then we do something. We evaluate our macro that we plot here. In our case, it's Q, <coughs> which is, uh, again, um, just simply a sharp. And here, um, we call defer. We don't want to, uh, to have for each passive uh, uh, to be expanded immediately. So we have to defer it, we have to break it. And then we pass the rest arguments and continue iterations. Um, so since we have here, oops, since we have here, I always forget to enter, to, to enable pointer. <coughs> um, since we have expanded at least once it, it will be expanded, so in this case it expanded two times. Um, but we passed three, so we want to continue um, the uh, expanded. We have to expand it again, again, again. Mm. And in practice you would write just an evil for each and it would immediately expand into one to three simulators. And this kind of demonstrates the number of response. Sometimes you kind of feel fuzzy and you don't know which direction it goes. <laughs> Just like now. So, sometimes you want to debug it. Um, there is some kind of possibility. Uh, you can do this, uh, you can use Pragma. Um, <clears throat> you can treat Pragma as um, some sort of special uh, macro, which will expand into um, preprocessor derivative, uh, which takes arguments and gives it back as a string literal. So in our case, we can debug our Q, which is basically our clever way to do a sharp operator. Yeah, so with these uh, circles I shows you which pragma has been evaluated, was evaluated, and when Q were expanded we can see that X were replaced with 42, <coughs> not 42 digits. This is uh, important to, to see. Uh, at this stage, we provoke to do a rescan. So, Cuckoo will be uh, given with uh, 42 digits. And then we will see that we got them. And that's it. Um, so, you may ask, why do we need it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but at least we can mimic uh, default parameters in Marcus. Uh, I think um, you developed uh, enough knowledge to, to build um, Marco is empty, and you can do this as a homework. Um, so imagine you would have a uh, Marco M, which takes um, at least two parameters, <coughs> and in some conditions, the third parameter will take some default value. You can easily do this. Um, in my case, I was using um, macros um, to, to expose some functions to um, Python, for instance, or to um, Go runtime. And to do this, you can't simply use templates. You would have to instantiate template functions. 
and make them uh, visible for other runtimes. <clears throat> so you'd have to write tons of ugly looking functions like um, this is uh, just an example. Uh, expose fun, not really fun. <coughs> Decal type this um, pointer to this. Then you repeat this um, expression again. And this may be your. Uh, um, this, th this will be the, uh, the name of exposed functions by default because you didn't specify uh, the second parameter as here <coughs> you would be able to do. Here you see a tuple with two arguments, but here just in one parameter. And if you remember my previous talk, I was talking about um, template string or literals. Uh, you can do, you can use user defined literals and define such a operator which would convert this string into a template structure. And using um, metaprogramming, you can convert exactly this string into snake case in compile time. And by the way, it became a part of standard. Uh, previously, it, it used to be in, uh, just a um, compiler addition uh, extension. And for the second case, where you specify alias for function, you can do, you can emit this um, line of code. So basically, uh, this is supposed to um, avoid a code duplication because it's it's tedious uh, to write so many times C X X function A. It's also unreadable, <coughs> and if you are able to come up with a very small uh, DSL. Might be better, um, but you need to be um, cautious, uh, and you. I would say you shouldn't go too far of a processor. All, all its usefulness is these two operators: sharp, sharp, and sharp, and that's basically it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, also in a similar way you can use it for generating serializers in the world when we didn't have uh, variadic um, parameters we had to use both p and um, binary params and there might be other users uh, uses. and my advice is just learn the basic um, get intuition, share with your colleagues and build small data cells. Uh, and that's it. Okay. Yes. Hi. I think we left out the most fun way to do self-inclusion of files, which is, I think, the most hilarious thing to do. And luckily nowadays we got um, very added templates because at one point this was the only way to make enough of the uh, template specializations. Mm -hmm. That's what Boost did for, I think, up to the fixed self-inclusion of eight or so. It generated a lot of templates. I think it's, it's still doing this for our backward uh, yeah. compatibility. And I think it's the most fun. Um, not today. <laughs> it was really difficult to to explain how that marker defer works, and I'm not sure. I don't know if exactly how include self works, and how to explain it. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Might be the topic for our next talk by someone else. <laughs> I was wondering, do you know when BA opt was introduced? Uh, can I speak a little bit? Do you know when the BA opt was introduced? Uh, it was introduced, if I'm not mistaken, in C++ 11. I see that you've regenerated some code. I, 
I find your lack of pearl to start being this. <laughs> because of Haskell? Yeah. Yes. Uh, Sorry, it should be C++. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there is a very useful site. I hope you all know it. It's a very browserable um, version of the standard. So here you can go to find uh, index and VA out. And it's well I don't know. It doesn't say where when it was introduced, but I believe it was introduced in some well, We can always <coughs> check it here. I'm curious. If you have more questions. Yeah. And Oh, about a year ago, I was trying to write a, a tracing library, and I wanted to be able to trace any number. Uh, I wanted to be able to output a whole load of variables and uh, just to see what they were. And um, so I wanted like a, a dump macro, which I gave a comma b comma c, and then what that would do is it would write out the string a followed by the value of a, and then it would do the same for b yeah. and c. Yeah. And I couldn't uh, like. I, I think I came across some some library preprocessor library to help me, but I never understood and how it worked. And it would only work for us up to I think fifty arguments. Not that I was going to be needing to dump that many arg uh, variables, but um, yeah. So trace bar should be exact. Uh, no, you have to actually also uh, yes that. But now try and do it with variadic uh, macro, where you do trace yeah, yeah. x comma y comma z yeah. and c. And then that, that uh, I could and I couldn't figure out how to do it in ordinary C plus plus either. Um, yeah. So basically, you can use um, property. But if you know how to make this work, <coughs> what does this mean? It's, oh. Yeah, so now you can use for each, uh, I believe now you know how to write for each, and it's, it's not going to be a problem. <coughs> uh, you also can, if I go, you I'm going for boost, and there is a, the samely named multiple macro reference. So this is a very stupid thing. It just concatenates everything with the um, underscore. That's it. More questions? So if there is no questions. You can follow me on Twitter. You can look at code samples. If you follow my this link, you will see. Um, and you can feel free to endorse me on LinkedIn. Well, thank you very much.